Well, Mr. Sands, let's just start this right away. There's lots of cool demos. That's right. This is why you take chemistry right here. This, <laughs> is, so one, cool. this is one of my favorite lessons because... We it's get to just, burn things. We and, do. Oh, this is what everyone thinks of when they think about chemistry is all the chemical reactions. So, hey. Let's go. Let's go. All yeah. Right. Hey, there are a number of different types of chemical reactions. Okay. There are combination reactions. Yes. Now, combination sounds like things that combine. come together. Yeah, these combine. are sometimes called synthesis reactions. Yeah. So actually, why don't you write that down? They're also called synthesis reactions. Mm -hmm. You're going to synthesize, make something. Right. All right, it's a general form. If you take a chemical A, react it with B, you make uh, AB. Right. So, so you, you take two things or more and smush them together into one. Yeah, pretty simple. All right, here's a real example. If I take calcium oxide and I react it with carbon dioxide, It'll make calcium carbonate. This, right. by the way, is the stuff you find in bones or seashells. Mm -hmm. Your bones are made of calcium carbonate. Marble. Marble. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Or if I take mercury and react it with oxygen, it makes mercuric oxide, mercury 2 oxide. Yeah. Notice it makes one substance here. You have chemical A, you have chemical B, and you have chemical AB, if you will. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, I think we should probably do it. A video! Yes, a demonstration! And I will put some things together and make them synthesized! Okay? Alright, now I'm going to talk about a combination reaction. A reaction where you have two things and they're going to join to make one. Alright, the reaction I'm going to work with is I have sulfur, elemental sulfur, right here, S. I think it's S8, isn't it, Mr. Sanders? It is. S8, doesn't say that. And I have iron metal. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, into this test tube and I'm going to put some of my sulfur. This is a one whole good thing of sulfur, is Mr. Sanders. That is, but it smells lovely, doesn't it? Oh, woo! If the... All right, so I have some sulfur in there, right? And then to that, I'm going to add some iron metal. Now, notice one thing I am doing as I'm mixing these. Notice I have different scoops for each of them because I do not want to put sulfur into the iron. It's not a good idea. Now, one thing I happen to know about um, iron... See, there we go. Of course. So here is iron mixed with sulfur. Now, notice they're not reacting. They're just kind of mixed together. Sitting there. So I'm going to shake them up. Okay, mix, 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 mix. And they still haven't reacted. Now, one way I can know that is I happen to have a magnet right here. And if I take the magnet, I don't know if you can see this. I think you can. I can move the... I can move the iron. Iron, of course, is attracted to the sulfur. And, um, yeah. Attracted to the magnet. Attracted to the magnet, yeah. So they, I can do that. The sulfur stays at the bottom. You can kind of see how the sulfur, because the sulfur is not attracted to the magnet, but the, but the iron is. So now this is essentially just a mixture of iron and sulfur. So they have not reacted. So to get them to react, what do we probably need? Heat it up. We need some heat. So fire. All right, let me move things around for a moment. Here. Okay. So we have our torch. Turn the gas on. Arch. So now I'm going to heat them up. Pointing it away from people. Not towards Mr. Sam's, even though I might want to. And if you look carefully, you can see that there's actually kind of the, the sulfur slightly melts there, Mr. Sam's. I'm trying to zoom it in here without getting too close. It's probably stinking up our room right now. Yep. We should have done this in a hood. Probably Sanders. should have, huh? Good thing we're the only ones here, huh? Ooh, that's pretty. Red. Yeah, that smells. How long was your sandwich, do you think? Are we good? Oh, I don't know. It's looking, it's looking pretty reactive to me. There's still a little bit of sulfur at the top, but I think we're good. All right. Now, if you zoom in, you can still see some of the swirling hot gases there, can't you? <laughs> That's, yeah, vaporized sulfur up there. Yeah. Lovely. I like that red. That's pretty cool. It is cool. Okay, now here's the thing that's interesting about it. All right, if I take the magnet, uh -huh. now that the iron has reacted, it is no longer going to be attracted to the magnet. So as you can see, there's some that's attracted to the magnet. All right, that's probably <laughs> because I was wondering it. I have to actually have, I probably didn't put enough sulfur in the reaction, but if I were to truly cause this to totally react, it would not be attracted to the magnet at all because I think I put too much iron in there. You'd have to figure out, actually, it will teach you how you could figure out how much you'd want to add to it. But let's assume that I did. It would be unattracted to the magnet, which means you have produced something else, in this case, iron sulfide, as opposed to just 
iron and sulfur. It smells like I'm at Yellowstone. Yeah, well, it's because sulfur stinks. I want to go put this in the hood. Please. <laughs> that was so cool! It was amazing! What did you have for breakfast this morning? It was McDonald's. That is the problem. <laughs> I think it's That so. McDonald's is bad for body. It destroys cells and brain cells, I think, too. <laughs> That's a whole other issue. Okay. <laughs> Hey, we should actually talk, guys, about uh, another combination reaction which is very famous yeah. um, and also very sad. Um, this is the Space Shuttle Challenger. Yeah. And if you recall, um, many of you are probably too they young don't recall. to know. I right. was in second grade when this happened. Okay, I was, I was much older than that. Yes. Okay, but there was a space shuttle called the Space Shuttle Challenger. Mm -hmm. And in 1982 four. Four. four, three. I was in college. I can't remember. I was in 84, 1984, yeah, it sounds about right. I was in second year college. About 1984, um, the Space Shuttle Challenger uh, lifted off, and um, it exploded in the air, killing all of the astronauts. As it turns out, there was a leak. Um, I don't know if you understand, um, but actually, let me go back here. That There's two tanks. You can only see one tank, but there's a big tank here, and this tank is filled with oxygen, and then the other tank on the other side is filled with hydrogen. Okay. There was a leak, and then the two chemicals mixed at the wrong time. That's actually what's, what's happening, is this is hydrogen and oxygen reacting. But they form water. So it's a very simple reaction. Hydrogen plus oxygen mix water. But it also produces large quantities of energy. They yeah. mixed at the wrong time, and these are the somber uh, pictures of what happened. Um, these are uh, basically the pictures of this exploding. And uh, the problem, of course, is as you see this huge explosion, of course, there were people in there. And it blew up. So it was just a simple combination reaction that had tragic results. Commander Dick Stoke, followed by Mr. Specialist Jim Griffith, Ron McNair, and uh, Pilot Mike Smith, followed by Griffin Masala, featuring space, uh, Ellison on the Zuga, and Payload Specialist Greg Jarvis. Nine, eight, seven, we have main engine start, four, three, two, one, and liftoff. Liftoff of the 25th Space Shuttle mission, and it has cleared the tower. Challenger, go with drama. Engine's getting throttled down now at 94%. Normal throttle, uh, most of the point, 104%. Travel down to uh, 65 percent shortly. Engine to 65 percent, three engines uh, running normally, three good fuel mills, three good APUs. Velocity 2,257 feet per second. Altitude 4.3 nautical miles. Downrange distance three nautical miles. Up three engines now at 104 percent. Challenger, go and throttle up. Challenger, go and throttle up. We're in 15 seconds. Velocity 2900 feet per second. Altitude 9 nautical miles. Downrange system 7 nautical miles. Go ahead. Um, flight GC, we've had uh, negative contact. We lost failing. Okay, all operators, watch your data carefully. Flight pilot until he gets stuff back. He's on his cue card for report modes. Flight controllers here looking very carefully at the situation. Obviously a major malfunction. We have no downlink. The guidance system showed that right SRB motion diverged from the orbiter and left SRB, indicating that the lower ET SRB strut was severed or pulled loose. some pictures again of it happening oh. and uh, these are the folks who um, who perished in there actually an interesting story if you don't know this is that this was the first they called teacher in space program and this lady right here yep. she is Christina McAuliffe 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 something yeah McAuliffe and she um, she didn't make it she was gonna do some cool experiments actually broke the hearts of lots of elementary kids like probably you so yeah you were probably one and the reaction was simply H2 plus O2 and it made water. Actually, to balance this reaction, we'd have to put a two here and a two here. And uh, these folks, um, they perished in the explosion. So kind of interesting sort of historical note, a very famous reaction that had tragic results. Yeah.
Okay. All right. We should do another type of reaction. Okay.